Morning, everyone. Welcome to another instalment of the Real Wealth Podcast. Uh, I'm Tom Gleason. Stefan Angelini joins me today. Thanks for coming, Steph. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. So we're going to try something uh, a little bit different. We just had an idea of uh, it might be fun to discuss what we're calling hot topics. So just an overview of what people have been discussing, what people have been interested in, no pun intended, because one of them is interest rates, but um, what's been happening in March, what people want to talk about it and potentially get an update on. So that broadly falls into two categories, the first being strategy, which we'll look at in a sec, and then uh, beyond that, what's happening in the market. So you're happy to jump right in? I'm excited. Well, first off, we'll just kick it off with a bit of a disclaimer. So we'll look at today, $3 million super cap, which everyone's been talking about. We'll look at the $1.9 million transfer balance cap. So how much can you have in pension phase or tax-free money in super? And then the market, we're going to look at interest rates, Silicon Valley Bank, yep, and Credit Suisse and what's been going on there. So hopefully a quick little wrap for everyone. So just let you know, this is just general information. If you want any personal advice, please go and consult a licensed financial advisor. Um, don't take anything we say as strategy or go off and do it. Make sure you're getting advice that's relevant to your situation. Thank you very much, Tom. Over to you. Cool. So as you mentioned, we want to start with um, one that's been discussed a lot, and we've had a lot of questions from um, clients and from friends and friends of friends about the new rules, proposed rules, nothing's in effect yet about the uh, $3 million cap on superannuation. Yeah, it's a big topic. Everyone's talking about it. which And understandable why. It's um, it's not legislated. No. So it's not actually in force, but it has raised a lot of years and it probably will come in force. It's been talked about for 2025, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. it 2024? No, 2025. 2025. Yeah, yeah, July 2025. Yep. Um, and it'll probably come into force in one way or another. Probably not in its current format though. So as a summary, what they're saying is that for anyone with balances of more than $3 million in super, yep. they want to increase the tax rate on anything above $3 million. Yep. So at the moment, the way it works is you got, if you're over, let's just say you're over 65, because that's when you'll have the biggest amount of money in your super. Yep. Anything up to $3 million, you have either account-based pension or in an accumulation phase like it currently is. Yep. But then anything above that $3 million will be taxed at about 30%. Yeah. And that's an important part that initially trying to get my head around was because it keeps being referred to as a cap. My first thought was you're capped at $3 million, All your money has to be elsewhere. Your money can more over $3 million can be in super. Mm. It's about the treatment of. So this 0 to $3 million would be treated in this way. Yeah. Beyond that will be treated in this way. Is that a fair way of... That's the easiest way of phrasing it. it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But a lot of people thought, does that mean I'm going to have to pull money out of my super? Yeah. Again. Yeah. No. And so the issues that would raise if you had to pull money out of your super is it would force people to sell assets Yep, to get assets out. At a time which is potentially not convenient for them. Not convenient for them, but when you've got a whole lot of people selling a whole lot of assets, mm -hmm. there's a flood onto the market. Yeah. Stocks can't fill the cash back. Yep. Banks can't fill the cash to get that out. And you get to sell property and there's going to be a whole flurry of property on the market and therefore it's probably going to cause Australia to go into a pretty bad recession. Yeah. Because right, all these people are trying to sell and no one trying to buy. Yeah. Because don't forget, we're selling the stamp duty implications and costs and brokerage and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so that's one of the reasons that it isn't a pullout strategy. But one of the things that one of the proposals by Tim Chalmers, who's he's the treasurer for Labor, who's in power, mm. one of what he said is that we're actually going to tax unrealized earnings if your super balance is, is above three million bucks. This is yeah okay. This is so, what you're talking about what what they're proposing now and what we will get are two very potentially different things. We'll get a watered down version of yeah exactly right. Yeah. So I guess I, what I think I think it's like a negotiation tactic. It's like I'm right. going to start up here. Yeah. And we're going to put someone to come down here, and then yeah. we're going to we're, our, our, our proposal is going to meet somewhere in the middle, and yeah. we'll all be happy, right? Yeah. yeah. So what all if we'll all be miserable? But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we will. And <laughs> so the what the current proposal says is like let's say you own a property in your super fund. Okay, and let's say you own a property that's worth a million dollars yep. and that's grown to $2 million, okay? And your total balance is five. So you've got $3 million of other, ma other money. Mm -hmm. They're going to want that property, even though it's grown by a million dollars, really, you don't realize the cap, you don't realize the tax on that growth portion until you've sold it. Yep. What, they're gonna, they're, what they're trying to say is that we want to tax you on the growth component that it's had, the unrealized earnings. You realize that earnings when you sell it. Yeah, when you crystallize that. And they're trying to say, no, 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 we want we want to take the tax now. Yeah. Some places do that, some structures do that, and that's what they want to do, or they're proposing to do. I don't think it's going to come into effect because yeah. people are going to say, why would I why would I own that asset? Yeah, if that's the case. When you say some places do it, who does do that? I think there's some countries that do it. Oh, right. Sorry. And there's definitely some structures that do it, like investment bonds, for yeah. example. They'll do that. 
they'll tax earnings while you still hold earnings. it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's why it just yeah, be careful. You got to know the intrinsic intrinsic tra- tax rules of different structures. But that's going to be one thing at a tip of over the edge. But basically, for everyone out there, um, it's not legislated yet. You got time to act if you're getting close to three million dollars cap. If you feel like your super is going to grow a lot over the next few years, so if you're a young, high-income earner, you've got a lot of savings and you're pumping a lot of money into super and you can see, I might have more than $3 million one day. And if you've got a partner that doesn't contribute much, it's probably a good catalyst to say, maybe I want to start doing super splitting or transferring money to my partner's name. Yep. So withdrawing money from super and putting it into their name just to even out the balances. So you're both approaching that $3 million cap at the same time because it's per person. Right. It's not in total. Yeah, okay. So you got three million bucks. Me and you are a couple. Yep. Thank God. Aren't I lucky? <laughs> You've got it's three. Me, but yeah, I'll go along with it. We'll see how it goes. You've got three. I've got three. Yep. And then it's all right. But if you've got three and I've got one mil, we start tipping into yours, leave mine as it is. Yep. Yeah, okay. Take out and put in. So that's some of the recontribution strategies. Yeah. Um, but still, not legislated. Cool. Let's move. Yeah, cool. So that, that one's been discussed a lot. Um, one that probably hasn't been brought up as much is the proposed change uh, to the transfer balance cap, which currently sits at 1.7. Yep. It's looking to or it's going to go to 1.9. How, why, why isn't it? Uh, track, tracking at that $100,000 increase per year. So transfer balance cap only matters for people that are retired or over 65. Yep. So when they've triggered what, like a retirement pension or account-based pension, uh, at the moment, you could have up to 1.7 mil in this retirement pension if you start at this financial year. Um, but if you want to make your superannuation monies tax-free and start drawing an income from it, then you take over into that account-based pension. If you wait until 1 July 2023, they've just proposed, they've just announced that that cap will increase to 1.9 million. So you can have up to 1.9 mil of your super money, mm. tax-free account-based pension. Yep. So this is really important for people that might be over 60 and retired, mm. over 60 and have seized the job, or they're over 65. Now, they might not have that retirement pension just yet. They might be waiting to start it. Mm. And therefore... You probably it's worth it just holding off to post what is it first of July? Yeah, if you if you're around that cap, <clears throat> yeah, and that's yeah. what a lot of these strat- our strategies are based on now is like just just hold off. It's better yeah. just to hold off, otherwise you're gonna your cap is gonna be one point seven mil forever. Oh, that locks it in. Yeah, yeah. So Sorry, you can't stop it and restart. Yeah. You go back to the new balance. So yeah, okay. And that's why it's quite a big thing. So it went up originally originally one point six mil. It's now one point seven mil. It's going to one point nine million dollars, and that's from one July twenty twenty three. So yeah, that's been the next big thing that we've been talking to our clients or close to that retirement phase or in that retirement phase about is just getting access access to that increased cap. So more of our money is tax free. That's an interesting one because I don't feel that one is being discussed as much as the changes to the super that we talked about earlier, the three million dollars. That has pretty significant um, consequences. Yeah, long term, so it needs to be brought to people's attention. But only affects a smaller cohort of people. Fair enough. It's a narrower group. But, yeah. Um, so the less people that care, less it gets talked about. Yeah. No. Fair. The um, before we leave those two, I just it occurred to me now that they appear to be at odds with each other. Where the three million dollar cap is about putting more into, it's like taking more tax. Mm. And then if you look at the concession on the $1.9 million transfer balance cap, they're less, they're going to be paying less in tax because yeah. that amount has been raised. Yeah. Are they at odds with each other or are they affecting different groups so they're not conflicting yeah. approaches? So the one, the transfer balance cap is old policy that is basically just ticking along and going with the rules. Right. So it's not a government change that's come in. It's just the old policy is the way it is, and it needs to increase based on how it how it was set. Oh, okay. Um, whereas the three million dollar cap is new policy. Yeah. To try and tax the extra wealthy. Yeah. Okay. People have too much money into. Um, with you. Yeah. Cool. Fair enough. Yeah. So we can move on to from strategy into market. Um, starting with, do you want to start with interest rates because that's been discussed probably more than anything. Yeah. Uh, so some in March, some countries raise rates. Higher than others. So I think New Zealand went 0.5. Right. Uh, Australia went 0.25. Yeah. Um, and now, so CBA and ANZ predict only one more rate rate rise. Yeah. And NAB and Westpac are, are predicting another two rate rises in Australia. Um, so what happened is, is we're going to talk about it in a, in a little bit, but the the financial issues or the or the banking issues around the world, Silicon Valley Bank and Credit Suisse, yep. 
that's caused a bit of stress on global markets. So, for instance, the US was expected to raise their rates by 0.5. Yeah. They only went 0.25, but people, some people were expecting they actually wouldn't raise rates because, because of, of these financials. Because, yeah. yeah, that's right. <clears throat> but they said inflation is such a big issue. Mm. We don't care about our own economic prosperity. We need to tackle inflation and tackle it hard. So they yep. kept increasing rates. Yep. So the big thing is, yes, rates have increased again. It is a big issue for people with debt, especially in Australia. So we have your average four year, an average, like you can do a fixed loan of four years. Mm. In America, they take out 30 year loans that are fixed. Yeah. Yeah. So if you took out your loan pre COVID or during the start or during COVID, yeah. you have really low interest rate for life. But if you're trying to buy a new property, you're buying with, with an interest rate of 8%. Gee. Yeah. So, it, so the American market isn't affected as much by inflation. We are impacted really hard. Mm. Uh, so that's why you might see Australia slowing down before the rest of the world. Yeah, okay. Uh, but yeah, interest rates will continue to increase. And that means if you're in like a term deposit, you can probably get a better return in a few months time. Um, but then expectations of interest rates. Mm. Uh, so he, I guess economists are predicting it'll stay about where it is until the end of the year and then it'll start to come off next year. As of the beginning of next calendar year or next financial year? Calendar year. Yeah, okay. Calendar year, good point. That um, is, I am didn't know that about like a 30 year fixed loan. You could, yeah. you could budget for the next three decades just knowing this is what. That's it. Although there's downside, which you mentioned. But yeah, yeah that's interesting. Yeah. So, um, so we touched on the other market factors, two major ones being Silicon Valley Bank and Credit Suisse. I know a little bit about, I'm just tracking a little bit about SVB, but I have not been up to date on Credit Suisse. So can you yeah. just give us a, a bit of an insight into what went on there? So Silicon Valley Bank was is the second largest ever bank fallover so the first one is what i think it was the washington bank is this 2008 or was this 2008 yeah. washington bank the reason yeah. they fell over because they had a heap of money in lehman brothers lehman brothers isn't a bank it was an investment bank they do mostly investing they don't take people's money right washington bank silicon valley bank took people's money silicon valley bank went from 80 billion dollars in deposits so deposits to people like you and me putting our savings with them yep and that grew to like 210 billion dollars in three years right and they're just like we just don't know what to do with the money so they had um, a few private equity firms say, you need to get your money out of this. And they posted it on their social media. And then because they're involved in the tech industry a lot, people started withdrawing their money. They're lending to the tech industry? They lend to the tech yeah, industry, yeah. but a lot of the tech industry deposits their money with Silicon Valley Bank. Oh, both. Okay. Yep. Yeah, Silicon Valley Bank is like tech hub of the world. Oh, of course. Yeah. So um, people. So what happened was there was a simple, there was a run on the banks. So people came in, wanted their money. Silicon Valley Bank couldn't get the money. Yep fast enough mm. and what they had is they had these long-term government bonds which are super safe but the only issue is is they lose money when they sell it because when they bought the bonds they've gone down in value since they bought them yeah because new bond issuances have been released yeah that are worth more because they pay a higher interest rate right so they've got this this issue where they're crystallizing losses to pay people out their deposits and then what happened is the fdic so basically the the deposit insurance company, mm. the federal deposit insurance company is what it is. They came in and said, we need to protect people's money. We're stopping everything. And they said, we're shutting down your bank. Right. So and it wasn't an internal decision. It was made for them. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So they're going to, they're under, they're under issues anyway. So um, parts of Silicon Valley Bank around the world started getting sold off. So HSBC bought the UK arm of Silicon Valley Bank. It was only small, but they bought it for a pound. You see it? A pound. Yeah, yeah. So they get, they get a database now, but they've got to take over everything. They've got to take over the loans, deposit holders, everything like that. So just recently, actually, Silicon Valley Bank sold. to First Republic. Right. And First Republic's share price jumped by 50% after the after the purchase was announced. How many weeks or months ago is this? Uh, end of March. Near the last few days of March. So like two days ago from when we filmed. Oh, right. Sorry. I thought this was a precursor to the troubles. This is mid. No, just like, just right. Like, just Sorry. happened. Yeah. Um, so obviously... There's been a lot of transactions in the banking industry. So yep. they're, they're taking the database. They're taking on the risk of the deposit holders. They're getting a lot of security by the government and government bodies to say, we're going to make sure everyone gets paid. Mm -hmm. But it is the only insurance for up to $250,000 of people's deposits yep. or savings yep. in the bank, in the Silicon Valley Bank. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, the, that was that issue. And that just caused everyone to start looking at the banking industry basically with the magnifying glass. Mm -hmm. Sort of leads on to Credit Suisse. Yes. Yeah. Credit Suisse, do you know how big they are? 30th largest financial institution in the world. Yeah. Been around since 
eighteen hundreds, a long, long time. Mm-hmm. Um, they come out and they posted like a five billion dollar loss, yeah. and they went to their investors and said, well, "Can we borrow some more money? We're going to do some restructuring." When you restructure a business, you need to pay people out. Yeah. You know, people that have been there for forty years, they need to get paid out. So you need money to do that. They went back to the largest deposit, went back to their investors, and they the company that owns the largest stake in them is a bank in Saudi Arabia. Yep. And they said, we're not giving you any more money. Right. And everyone's like, oof, something's wrong. Yeah. But their main reason behind it was, we own 9.8% of your company. If we give you more money, that's going to increase our share ownership to above 10%. There's going to be more regulators in Europe, more regulators in our own country that are going to be looking at us. Right. We don't want that. Yeah. So we're not going to give you more money to own more shares in your company. Yeah. Fair enough. But this made everyone sort of nervous, nervous and their share price dropped by 30% overnight. And then just created alarm bells around the world. And over a weekend, a bank, another Swiss bank called UBS, who's, which is a powerhouse, came in and bought the bank for $3 billion. Mm. This will go down as the one of the best purchases in, in history. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. While Credit Suisse was posting a loss, UBS just gone, I'll snap that up. For nothing. Really profitable financial, uh, really, really profitable wealth management arms. Really prof- profitable investment banking arms. They've got some systemic issues, but we'll we'll strip all the operating costs out and just run it through our business. Yep. But they get the client base. Yeah. And it just goes under UBS now, and they're going to be just a massive economic powerhouse. Yeah. Some people are saying it was a bit unfair that they got run at it, and they got it so quickly. Right. And as you can see, like we speak about, sometimes you just got to act with eighty percent of the information. Yeah. Yeah. And if it's a good deal, and you can smell it's a good deal, yeah. you take it. And that's yeah. what a lot of people are saying now. Yeah. So Credit Suisse. It will be gone by the end of 2023, right? And it will be absorbed into UBS. What they do with their assets or their arms, whether they sell them, keep them or whatever, we'll see what happens. Mm. Um, but that's just a large institution being gobbled up by someone else. And it's just, it's made people worry around the world. One of the issues that happened with Credit Suisse actually was they had these bonds out there. So every now and then banks, any company come and issue what we call a tier one bond. And they basically say that, we're going to, we want to borrow money off you. Yep. You're not going to take on the equity risk. Instead, you're going to take on the, um, we're going to, act, you're going to be a, 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 we're going to loan money from you. So you're going to sit on our, our, our debtors list, basically. Right. So in the event that we go bankrupt, we'll pay you out, but we won't pay out shareholders. What happened in this instance is when UBS bought them, they bought them at 60%, 40% of the value of the stock. Mm. And that means people that own the shares lost 60%. The people that own these tier one bonds lost all their money. Right. So they just said, we're not paying you back yet. So there was a big issue with that. Um, and then it sort of relates to the Australian banking world. We don't have issues like that. Um, our banks are a lot bigger, safer, yep. a lot more deposit holders. And that's probably where everyone's worried that we're getting questions on anyway. Shouldn't be worried about Australian banks. Yeah, we don't have that level of, so SVB being uh, yeah, small a mid- yeah. Mid-range in America, yeah. Although it may, it was small and it just became big because it went big so fast. Yeah. And it could be a size comparison for some of our major banks, but we don't have that mid-tier yeah. that can fall over overnight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the way that our banks now capitalise since two thousand eight, they are a lot safer. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, a lot safer. So that's what that's been the main worries about people um, with that Credit Suisse and Silicon Valley Bank is how will banks be around the world? Mm. Short answer: they'll be fine. Yeah, they'll be fine. Uh, most of your money will be fine. But what it's really made people do is that when you've owned, when you've got more than two hundred fifty grand in the bank, it means that anything above two hundred fifty thousand dollars isn't actually safe. Right. People think it's safe as houses. It's not. Mm. Um, real estate isn't safe, but government bonds where people are now putting their money. So just over the last two weeks since Silicon Valley Bank fell over, there's been two hundred seventy billion dollars. That where people are basically pull deposits out of banks right. and put it into government bonds through what right. we call these money markets. Yeah, government bond is probably the safest way you can have your money. After the first two hundred fifty grand, you got in a financial institution savings account. Right. So that's what's happened. That's been the fallout. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's um basically everything we've covered off the changes to or the proposed changes to super as well as market. What's affecting the market are all situations that are still unfolding. So hopefully in the future we can hit on another hot topics. Do it again in April. We can cover off what's um, developed with these and anything new that's come up as well. Beautiful, man. Well, thanks. And and if you um if you want to keep up to date with what we're talking about, I try to release 
a five to seven minute video every day just on the updates of what's happening around the world. So if you want to keep up to date and listen to that, otherwise you can tune in with me and Tommy once a month. Perfect. Cool. Right. Thanks very much. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.